second coming, the rapture, or whatever. But that is an event where he comes even before then. It's called death. that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. May the Lord, may the Lord have the blessing for reading, the hearing, the hearers and doers, the brightest of the divine word may be deceived. Now, I 
power to see whatever will be, will be. And since they believe that whatever will be, will be, they believe that faith has been predetermined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And therefore, they have no choice in the matter. Uh -huh. And so, they believe either that they have no choice or that their choice does not matter. Yeah. And therefore, they look like, like a bubble of water mm -hmm. tossed to and fro by the currents yeah. or by whatever it is. But according to the Bible, one of the fundamental aspects of the nature of man and of all of God's intelligent created beings mm -hmm. is the attribute of choice. Mm -hmm. all right. God did not pre-program man to do his bidding. God created man with the capacity to choose to accept or reject his will. And God created man with the capacity to choose a course in life. But what about those impossible situations in life where any man has no control? Situations where any adverse circumstances are thrust upon him through no choice of his own. Even in those situations where it seems like there is no choice, mm -hmm. there is a choice. Mm -hmm. This is where many people err because they think they had no choice in what happened. They think they had no choice at all. And while it may be indeed true that we sometimes have no choice, in what happens, there's always a choice in how we respond to what happens. And not only is there always a choice in how we respond, but often how we respond is even more significant than the event itself. For it's how we choose to respond that makes mountains. I don't know who it is. Yeah. Yeah. It is how we choose to respond that determines whether the giant is too big to fight or too big to miss. No, how we respond does not change the situation, but that response does change our perspective of the situation. And often it is the choice of response and perspective that makes all the difference in the world. All right. And the response and the perspective mm -hmm. is always, they are always, they are always matters of choice. So quit, quit allowing people to pull your strings. Quit saying he made me mad. Thank you. Quit saying he ticked me off. No, you chose to respond that You could have chosen to respond differently. If I were to in his heyday, he would live. If I were to go up and if I had walked up to Muhammad Ali and told him, I'm going to look your butt. Chances are, Muhammad Ali would have laughed. That's right. He would have laughed. He didn't know who I was. He didn't know who I was. But he still would have laughed. Yeah. He would have laughed because, hey, he, you know, he was the greatest boxer in the world. How, how in the world would someone untrained, unskilled, mm -hmm. be given boxing? Mm -hmm. He would have left. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because he knew the situation. 
But the same by the same token, sometimes you need to laugh instead of be mad. When people come to you with certain situations, instead of you, instead of you allowing them to pull your pull your string and respond to her, you need to understand sometimes people do stuff just to get the response that they you want to respond. See, see, they 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 been looking at you yeah. and they know they know that it's under your skin. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so sometimes, even if they're getting under your skin, uh -huh. you need to be like that soap commercial. Don't let them see the sweat. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the response is and the perspective always matters. Matters of choice. Nobody may not have a choice of what happens. Uh -huh. We always have a choice in how we choose to respond yes, to what happens. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and so often, how we respond is more important and more impactful than what happens. Uh -huh. But often, even if we don't have a choice in what happens, we do not make appropriate. Choice. Even when we do have a choice, brother, often we don't make an appropriate choice because of ignorance and fear. Mm -hmm. so, right, so. But even when we do, mm -hmm. we need to make a choice. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes mm -hmm. when we don't make a choice, mm -hmm. we still make a choice. That's right. That's That's right. right. Because we decide. Not to decide. <laughs> Which is ABC. Preach, preach. And often people do not make appropriate choices because their choice muscle <laughs> right. is undeveloped and All right. All right. they have undeveloped weak choice muscles. <laughs> because early in life, uh -huh. they develop the habit of thinking and saying it doesn't matter. That's right. When given a choice uh -huh. between chocolate or vanilla ice cream, uh -huh. Uh -huh. instead of making a choice, yeah. They always said it really didn't matter. <laughs> Therefore, they became accustomed to accepting whatever they received, chocolate or whatever. All right. As they grew older, this ingrained habit was transferred from things that really did matter to things that really did. Matter. And in the meantime, they became increasingly frustrated in and with life because they thought and believed life was happening to them instead of life happening for them. They adopted a victim mentality that fed even more into their erroneous idea that their choices didn't matter. That's yeah. right. And as you probably figured out by now, this became a closed circle of defeat. So now they don't make the appropriate choices because they believe and feel their choices don't matter. But it is precisely because they don't believe their choices matter that they make inappropriate choices. Yeah, yeah. Now, if what I just described is indicative of your life, mm -hmm. here is how you can break that cycle. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. From now on, from now on, from now on, All right, okay. from now on, okay. no matter how small or insignificant it may seem, always make a choice. All right, all right. When confronted with 
even a minute or petty decision. Yeah. Like choking, like choosing vanilla or chocolate ice cream, always make a choice. Yes. From now on, refuse to believe, feel, or say it doesn't matter. All right, all right. Now, now you might have say, my pastor, it really does matter. <laughs> because I really do like coke, I do like chocolate, I do like vanilla, it don't matter. Well, if that's the case, uh -huh. <laughs> still make a choice. All right. Choose chocolate this time and choose vanilla the next time. Preach. But always make a firm choice. Amen. Amen. Now, you might be asking, what in the world <laughs> could make a firm choice between chocolate and vanilla ice cream? Have to do with making choices in life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you develop a firm habit of making a choice with the little things, like the flavor of ice cream, it makes it easier and it becomes second nature to make the appropriate firm choices in the big things of life. You will develop your choice muscles to the point where you always choose what you want. Amen. Instead of merely choosing to accept what was chosen for you. All right. Because if you don't make the appropriate choices for your life, I can guarantee you, like yourself or someone else, will make the choices for you. And often those choices will not be in your best interest. Strong choice muscles give you the advantage of choosing to shape your life instead of having your life shaped for. Or instead of being shaped by life. The habit of making choices yeah, yeah, yeah. is the difference between life happening to you and life happening for you. Right. It all starts with the habit of making a choice and not defaulting to it doesn't matter. All right, all right. Now listen, it's not just a matter of consistently making choices. Uh -huh. We need to consistently make the right yes, sir. choice. Yes, sir. All right. This is where the text comes into play. All right. All right. You might note that the text is in Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. The name Deuteronomy comes from chapter 17, verse 18, which says, and when he sits on the throne of his kingdom, he shall write for himself a book, a copy of this law approved by the Levitical priests. Mm -hmm. The law was saying what Israel's future king was to do, their king were to do, they were to write, make copies of the book, make copies of the law. The term Deuteronomy comes from the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament and the term literally means second law. But it was not another law different from the law given at Sinai but rather a faithful repetition and application of that law. But why would there have to have been a need for a faithful Repetition and application or amplification of the law. All right. The need was there. Yes, sir. Was because all of the initial generation that had received. 
They died in the wilderness because they chose to believe the report of ten spies mm -hmm. who didn't believe God would enable them to, prom to possess the promised land like God said he would. They died in the wilderness because they chose to believe an evil report. All right. And it's amazing today. You know, we, we, we see it is it, 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 slapping us in the face. People are making wrong choices now in spite of overwhelming evidence. Oh. 
to learn the material in the textbook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Consequently, they were not prepared. They were not prepared for the responsibilities of life. So when they confronted with what they were not prepared for, they sought to escape. Yeah. 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 By dulling their senses to the psychological, emotional, and physical trauma that life often inflicts. That's right. You see, it wasn't just one choice. Uh -huh. But rather, it was a series of choices uh -huh. that led to a series of more choices. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It became a downward cycle of one bad choice after another that caused their life to be cursed. Right. Yes, and if there is no claim, no very same choices, yes, will eventually lead to death. Right. I want to put it here and here. Uh -huh. You hear struggling with any type of addiction, uh -huh. whether it be heroin, crack, whatever. You have a choice. Yeah, yeah. There is love. Yes, you, you, listen, you may seem powerless. It may seem as if you don't have a habit or rather the habit has you. Yeah, yeah. But there you go. Yeah. Who is stronger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than your nature. Yeah, that's right. Stronger than your bad. To make the choice to keep the habit. Mm. Because the habit has already kicked you. Yeah. The choice you need to make yeah. is to choose God. Choose life. To 
me in covenant relationship with him meant to live in obedience mm -hmm. to his law. Yes, his law shining his will. Mm -hmm. All throughout the Bible, this principle is evident. Mm -hmm. To love the Lord right. meant to obey the Lord. Yes. Let me say that again. To love the Lord. Meant to obey the Lord. Yes, yeah. Let me say that a third, a third time. <laughs> it's in the Bible. The principle says to love the Lord. Uh -huh. Is to obey the Lord. Yeah. I think I need to say that one more time. <laughs> uh, because a lot of people today talk about how they love right. the Lord. Can give you peace 
not take it lightly. If you have a call and it's your brother or sister, get it right. Yes, God. Don't take this with malice and hatred, jealousy in your heart. Paul said that was the reason he started the church of Grant. That was the reason some had died before that time. Some were sick because they took the Lord's bread. He drank his blood. My word. You preach a sermon when you do this. You know, I, I, I talk to people all the time in the church. I ain't no preacher when you preach every first Sunday. Because when you partake of the bread, partake of the drink, you are telling the world, you are proclaiming that I am one with you. I'm one with my sister. One with my brother. So let us all be together. The drink represents his blood. In the Bible, blood is symbolic and emblematic of life. We talk about choosing life. His blood is our life. Yes. He can shed it for us. Let's all drink together. The Bible says that after that night, after they sang, after they ate and drank, they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives, but we don't, we don't have the Mount of Olives to look at that. look at the here at home. I pray God's peace and blessings. On you in the name of Jesus. And this is no matter what happens. 